morning, boys and girls. I hope you're all doing very well and that you had a lovely, lovely Christmas. Well, in our Christmas lesson, we learned about how God came in the person of Jesus Christ to tabernacle or to temple amongst his people, God with us. And before that, we learned about King Solomon, who built a temple for God in the time of the Israelites. Well, today we're going to continue learning about King Solomon. We know that he had a lot of wisdom and knowledge. The reason why is that he asked God for wisdom and knowledge. And it's because God is extremely wise and has a lot of knowledge that he gave this to King Solomon. Now, today we learn about a very interesting person that comes to visit King Solomon. And we will read out of 1 Kings 10, verse 1 to 13. That's in the Old Testament. 1 Kings 10, verse 1 to 13. And we will read out of the Bible, of course. This is a way God speaks to us primarily. If we're ever wondering what God wants to say to us or what God is like, what he would say to us, we can simply look at the Bible and see how God speaks to us today. So, let's see who is this interesting visitor to King Solomon. The Queen of Sheba heard about how famous Solomon was. She also heard about how he served and worshipped the Lord. So she came to test Solomon with hard questions. She arrived in Jerusalem with a very large group of attendants. Her camels were carrying spices, huge amounts of gold and valuable jewels. She came to Solomon and asked him about everything she wanted to know. Solomon answered all her questions. There wasn't anything too hard for the king to explain to her. So the queen of Sheba saw how very wise Solomon was. She saw the palace he had built. She saw the food on his table. She saw his official sitting there. She saw the robes of the servants who waited on everyone. She saw his wine tasters and she saw the burnt offerings Solomon sacrificed at the Lord's temple. She could hardly believe everything she had seen. She said to the king, back in my own country, I heard a report about you. I heard about how much you had accomplished. I also heard about how wise you are. Everything I heard is true, but it, I didn't believe those things. So I came to see for myself and now I believe it. You are twice as wise and wealthy as people say you are. The report I heard doesn't even begin to tell the whole story about you. How happy your people must be. How happy your officials must be. They always get to serve you and hear the wise things you say. May the Lord your God be praised. He takes great delight in you. He placed you on the throne of Israel. The Lord will love Israel for all time to come. That's why he has made you king. He knows that you will do what is fair and right. So King Solomon becomes famous because he has so much wisdom and knowledge. This Queen of Sheba comes and she puts King Solomon to the test by asking him a lot of difficult questions and he can answer all of them. He seems so amazing and perfect, boys and girls, but, but, he is still just a human being. He is a human king. He is not God. He is not Jesus. Now, actually, I'm going to show you just 
how wise God is by reading to you from Romans 11 verse 33 to 36. This is in the New Testament. Romans 11, 33 to 36. How very rich are God's wisdom and knowledge. How he judges is more than we can understand. The way he deals with people is more than we can know. Who can ever know what the Lord is thinking? Or who can ever give him advice? Has anyone ever given anything to God so that God has to pay them back? All things come from him. All things are directed by him. All things are for his praise. May God be given the glory forever. Amen. So boys and girls, when you now look at the story of King Solomon and of Queen Sheba coming to visit him, think about God. Think about God who is wiser and has more knowledge than all of these people put together. And if he was not that wise, he would not have made King Solomon that wise. Well, boys and girls, that's our lesson for today. And I will see you next week. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.